Okay, the next question. Just like when we calculate delta G, we have a way to calculate delta G standard, and where do you usually get the delta G standard values? Out of a book. It's where you also get the E cells. You look up these tables of reduction potentials and calculate it from the values out of a book. It's where I got them. So, but those are the standard values. But what if you're not under standard conditions? Well, then you have a, an equation. You look up the value in the book and then use an equation to get you a fudge factor. We have the same thing here. We're going to have a fudge factor. So, and the equation is called the Nernst equation. And it's E equals E standard minus RT over NF natural log of Q. It's called the Nernst equation. But we're usually a little nicer to you than this. What you're usually given is not this rough form. We usually assume that the temperature is 298 Kelvin. F here is called Faraday's constant. We'll go talk about it later, but it's 96,500. And R here is the gas constant. And what's, if we're always doing this at 25 degrees Celsius, 298 Kelvin, then that's a constant temperature. And what's a constant times a constant divided by a constant? constant. A constant. And so sometimes we'll give this to you in this form. And we'll say E equals E standard minus 0 0.0257 over N natural log of Q. And it makes it a little bit easier in the plug-in and chug-in. However, natural logs kind of suck. And they're not so bad now because we have calculators. But back when they were doing this math, they didn't have calculators. And using a natural log really sucks. So, but for log base 10, regular logs, they had tables. And they could calculate any log just by matching it up on the table. And so originally, what they actually did is so that they could use a log base 10. It turns out that a log base 10 is the same thing. So as natural log with, a, with this extra factor of 2.303. And when you factor that in, you get negative 0.05916 over n log base 10 of q. It doesn't really matter which version you use. They're both on your sheet. It could be given to you in either way on your, on your exam on the front page, which is why I've given you both. I'm personally going to use this one because I like log base 10. I can do a lot of those in my head. I can't do natural log for anything in my head. OK, so the next question on your handout. So it says, it's the first thing on the back page there, calculate the cell potential from part A right here from the last question. So it says calculate the cell potential when the conditions are changed a little bit. And it's saying the conditions are now the zinc ion concentrations 0 0.001 molar. And the cobalt ion concentration is 0 0.1 molar. So how would I know that this negative 0.48 volts doesn't apply? Well, because the negative 0.48 volts is for what conditions? Standard. Are these standard? What would these have to be if I would be under standard conditions? They'd have to be one molar both, and they're not. So this doesn't apply. The standard value under these conditions is our value is not going to be negative 0.48. That's the standard value. We're not under standard conditions. OK. We need to use this to get there. And so this equation, the way it works here, we got our E. We still use that standard value. And that standard value is still negative 0.48. That we used from the data that came out of a book. But now we got this extra fudge factor to take into account. 0 0.05916 over n. Now n, what does n usually represent? Moles. In this context, n means moles of electrons transferred in the balanced reaction. So if you look here, let's use our lovely green marker. For zinc 2 plus turning into zinc, how many electrons would that be? That's two electrons gained. For cobalt 2, or cobalt turning into cobalt 2 plus, how many electrons is that? Two. That's two electrons lost. In this case, two electrons gained, two electrons lost. This was two electrons transferred. And so we're going to plug in a big fat two. If you recall, the reaction we balanced way back at the beginning of the day, or beginning of the night, rather, and one of the half reactions was five electrons. The other half, half reaction was two electrons. 
How many electrons overall did we balance that out to? So, so one half reaction was five electrons that were being gained, and the other one was two electrons lost. And we balanced it out to the least common multiple, 10 electrons. 10 in that case would have been n. So n is that total number of electrons transferred in the balanced reaction, whatever it's balanced to. Well, in this case, it's 2. Great. Makes it easy when it's something like this. So it's 2. And then we've got the log term. In this case, log. And if we look at the balanced reaction, again, you should know that ions are aqueous, but elemental metals, as long as it's not mercury, are solids. And so what's Q for this reaction? What's the expression for Q? Cobalt 2 plus over zinc 2 plus, which in our case, solids again don't show up. In our case, cobalt 2 plus is 0.1 molar, zinc 2 plus is 0.001 molar. Make sure, notice I didn't have any coefficients to worry about. The coefficients were 1. But notice if I had coefficients, I might have to square some numbers in here or something like that. But we don't have to in this case. Cool. And from here, it's plug and chug. So can anybody work this all out and get me a nice, lovely answer? Awesome. Cool. I had nice round numbers for powers of 10. and. That's when logs are a little bit easier. So, but awesome. It's just plug and chug. Let your calculator do the work for you. But that's the Nernst equation. This is how we calculate the potentials when we're not under standard conditions. You still need that standard value. We already had it calculated, but if we hadn't already had it calculated, we would have had to calculate that first and then add the fudge factor in there as well. Question? So would that equation have been given to us? Equation's totally going to be on the front page of your exam, for sure. You do not have to memorize this equation at all. Totally provided. Moles of electrons transferred in the balanced reaction. So here, two electrons gained, two electrons lost. That's two moles of electrons transferred. So, yeah, if you notice, like one of the ones we did earlier had, in fact, let's write it out. We had two Cr3 plus plus three Cu go into 3Cu2 plus plus 2Cr. Recall this one. And if you look, for chromium 3 plus to chromium, how many electrons is that? Yeah, with two of them each, it's six total. For copper going to copper 2 plus, there's three of them doing that. That's six electrons as well. Six electrons gained there, six electrons lost there, six electrons, six moles of electrons transferred overall. N would be six for this reaction. Not a problem. OK, so we just did the calculations, but we can do more than just the calculations. So if you look, let's say this reaction right here reaches equilibrium. Let's say it reached equilibrium. When it reached equilibrium, what would delta G be? Zero. Guess what the voltage would be? Zero. And again, it's not the value you get from a book that goes to zero. It's the non-standard value that equals zero at equilibrium. Cool, it goes to zero. So let's say I let this thing reach equilibrium. If I add a bunch of zinc ions into the solution, will it still be at equilibrium? No, it's not going to be at equilibrium anymore. By adding a bunch of zinc ions, which way is it going to shift? To the right. And when we say shift right, that actually means the reaction is now spontaneous to the right. And so is the E cell still zero at that point? No, the E cell would now be positive, and delta G would now be Negative, because it's spontaneous going left to right. Cool. So you should know that anything that causes the equilibrium to shift right, it makes the voltage get more positive and delta G get more negative. Anything that would cause a shift to the left, exactly the opposite. A shift to the left would make the voltage get more negative and delta G get more positive. So that's qualitatively, conceptually, what you need to understand about the, this principle as well. We can do the calculation and do the math, but Qualitatively, it comes in handy as well. If you guys recall this reaction right here.
So, question you might get conceptually now might give you the reaction, the balanced reaction here, and they might ask you some things. What would happen to the equilibrium if I added more solid? Which way would the equilibrium shift? It doesn't. Solids and liquids can't shift it, only aqueous or gas. Notice solids and liquids don't show up in the equilibrium constant expression. So if I add more solid, it's still at equilibrium. I haven't changed anything. So however though, which way would the equilibrium shift if I added more I minus? To the right, and so the voltage would go up or down? It would go up, it gets more positive. And notice more positive means the same thing as less negative, by the way. So, but yes, and that's an increase in potential. Anything that shifts right increases potential, decreases delta G. But this chapter is about potential. So what would happen if I increase the amount of MN2 plus in the solution? Shift left, so what would happen to the potential? It goes down. Now the tricky of all tricky questions, guys, think about it before you answer. What would happen to the potential, the voltage, if I increase the pH? If I increase the pH, am I making the solution more acidic or more basic? basic? More basic. So what's happening to him? If I'm making the solution more basic, I'm removing him. And the equilibrium is going to shift to the left, and the voltage is going to go down. So be careful. If pH is increasing, H plus is decreasing. And make sure you get your shift right. They love doing that to you on something that has H plus in it. So be careful. They could technically do it with OH as well, but it just happened, you'll see it much more commonly with H plus, yeah.